Live from Vancouver, Canada, it's theCUBE. Covering OpenStack Summit North America 2018. Brought to you by Red Hat, the OpenStack Foundation, and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back, I'm Stu Miniman with my co-host John Troyer, and you're watching theCUBE, worldwide leader in tech coverage, and this is OpenStack Summit 2018 in Vancouver. Happy to welcome to the program, first time guest, Melvin Hillman, who's the governance board member of Open Lab, uh, which we got to hear about in the keynote on Monday. Thanks so much yes. for joining us. Thanks for having me. All right, so, so Melvin, uh, you know, we, we were, uh, give it, start us off with a little bit about your background, what brought you to the OpenStack community, and uh, we'll go from there. Sure, yeah, so my background is in Linux system administration, and my getting involved in OpenStack was more or less seeing the writing on the wall as it relates to virtualization and wanting to uh, get an early start in understanding how things would pan out over the course of you know uh, some years. So, probably starting OpenStack maybe like three or four or so years ago. Um, I was probably late late to the party than I wanted to be, um, but through that process, uh, work started working at Rackspace first, and that's how I really got more involved uh, into op OpenStack in particular. Yeah, okay, you, you made a comment. The, the writing on the wall for virtualization. Explain that for a sec. So for me, um, I, I was at a shared hosting company. And we weren't virtualizing anything, right? We were using you know, traditional servers, we were uh, uh, dedicated servers installing hundreds you know, of customers on those, on those servers. And so at one point, what we started doing was we, we would take a dedicated server and we would create a virtual machine on it, but make it, we would use most of the resources of that, uh, of that, that dedicated server. And so that, what that allowed that shared hosting was to tear stuff down and recreate it, but it was very manual process. And so, of course, you know, the infrastructure service and orchestration around that, um, you know, OpenStack was becoming the de facto, you know, standard and way of doing it. And so I didn't, I didn't want to try to learn manually or fix something up uh, internally. I, I wanted to go where OpenStack was, was being uh, highly de developed a lot and people were working on it in their day-to-day -day jobs, which is, which is why I went to Rackspace. Okay. Yeah. Uh one of the things we, we look at, this, this is a community here, so it takes sure. people from lots of different backgrounds and some of them do it on their spare time, some of them yeah. are paid by larger companies uh, to participate. Uh, so t tell us about you, you know, Open Lab itself, uh, you, you know, and, and how your company uh, participates there. Sure, so at, 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 let's say my, I started, well, I'm at Huawei now, but I was at Rackspace and that's kind of how I got more involved in the community and, and there I started working on um, you know, testing things above the the OpenStack uh, ecosystem, right? So, um, things that people want to build on top of OpenStack. And during that process, uh, while we reached out to me, was like, hey, you know, you're doing a great job here. And I was like, yeah, I'm, I would love to come and explore more of how we can increase this uh, activity in, in the community at large. Uh, and so, OpenLab was essentially born out of that, which, the open the OpenStack community, you know, they, they deliver the OpenStack APIs and they kind of stop there. You know, everything above that is that that's you do that on your own more or less. And so, as a uh, also as a chair of the user committee, again, just being more concerned about the people who are using stuff, um, I, Open Lab was able was available to facilitate me um, having access to hardware and access to people who are using. Um, things outside of OpenStack and use cases, et cetera, where we want to test out um, uh, more integrated tools working with OpenStack and different versions of OpenStack. And so that's essentially what OpenLab is, uh, enables. So in OpenLab, uh, projects come together, and uh, it's basically it's an interop, uh, boy, the networking world, they've had the interop uh, plug and plug uh, fest, fest for a long time, right? Yeah. But in essence, uh, projects come together and, and you, you, you integrate them and, and start to, you, you invite them in and they integrate and start to test them. Sure. Uh, starting with, uh, I mean, I see uh, for this release, uh, Terraform and, que and uh, Kubernetes. Kubernetes, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so a lot of people want to use Kubernetes, right? And uh, you, you, as an OpenStack operator, you essentially, you don't want to, <laughs> you don't really want to go and learn all the, the bits of Kubernetes uh, necessarily, and so, uh, but you want to use Kubernetes and you want to work seamlessly with OpenStack, and you want to be, use the APIs that you're used to using with OpenStack, and so like, we work very heavily, heavily on the external cloud provider for OpenStack, enabling uh, Cinder v3, um, for containers, you know, that you're spinning up in in in, in uh, Kubernetes, so that they have you know seamless integration. You don't have to try to attach your volumes; they they are automatically attached. Um, you don't need load. You don't have to figure out what your load balancing is going to look like. 
You use Octavia, which is the load balancing service for OpenStack, very tightly integrated, and things, you know, as you spin things up, they uh, work as you would, ex you would expect. And so then all the other legacy applications and all things you're used to doing with OpenStack, you bring on Kubernetes and you essentially do things the way you've been doing them before with just an additional layer. Yeah, uh, Melvin, I wonder if you can talk a little bit about uh, the, the, the providers and the users. You know, sure. How do they get engaged and uh, you know, to give us a little flavor around those. Yeah, so you get engaged, you go to openlabtesting.org and there's two options. Uh, one is you can test out your applications and tools by clicking get started, you fill that out. And what's great about Open Lab is that we actually reach out and we talk with you, we consult with you per se, because we have a lot of variation in hardware that's available to us. And so we want to figure out the right um, hardware that you need in order to do the test that you want so that we can get the output as it relates to that integration that will, of course, educate and inform the community at large of whether or not it's working and been validated. And again, as, uh, as, so, as a person who wants to support Open Lab or for a provider, for example, wants to support Open Lab, uh, you click on the support open lab link, you fill out a form and you tell us, you know, do you want to provide more infrastructure? Do you want to uh, uh, talk with us about how clouds are being architected, integrations are being architected, things that you're seeing um, in the open source use cases that may, have, that may not getting the testing that they need and you're willing to uh, work with engineers from other companies uh, around that. So individual testers and then companies who may bring a, a number of testers together around a particular use case. Now you're starting to publish some of the results of interop testing and things like yes. that. How is Open Lab going to, uh, how does it produce its results? Is it, is it eventually going to be producing white papers and things like that, or, mm -hmm. or dashboards, or what's your vision there? Yeah, so we're producing dash, that we produce a very archaic dashboard right now, but we're working with uh, the CNCF to, uh, if you go see, so you go cncf.ci, and they have a very nice dashboard that kind of shows you a number of projects and whether or not they work together. And so it's, it's open source, so what we want to do is work with that team to figure out how do we change the logos and the uh, Git repos that are driving those red and green success or failure icons that are there, and they're but they're relevant to the test that we're doing in Open Lab. So yeah, so we want to, have, we want to definitely have a dashboard that's very easy to uh, decipher what tests are failing and, yeah. or passing. Looking forward, what, what kinds of projects are you most interested in uh, getting involved? Right now, very much Kubernetes, of course. Um, there's a, we're, we're really focusing on multi-architecture, again, um, as a result of our work with Kubernetes um, and, and driving you know, full conformance and multi-architecture. Um, that's kind of the wheelhouse at this time. Um, we're open for folks to give us a lot of different uh, use cases, like we were starting to look at some edge stuff. Um, how can we participate there? We're starting to look at FPG, uh, FPGAs and GPUs. Um, so a lot of different, we don't, we don't have a full integration uh, in a lot of different areas just yet, but we are having those conversations. So, so actually, I, I spent a bunch of years uh, when I, I worked on the vendor side living in an interop lab. Okay. And the, the most valuable things were not figuring out what worked, but what broke. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, you know, what, what kind of things, you know, as you're working through this, what learnings back do you, do you share with the community, you know, both the providers and sure. the users, but big stumbling blocks that, you, you right. know, you can help people give a red flag or right. say, you know, avoid these type of things. Right, yeah, exactly what you just said, you know, um, what's good is some of our stuff is geographically dispersed, so we can start to talk about um, if, if, what's the latency look like, uh, you may, you know, within that you know few square miles that you're operating and doing things, it's, things it works great. But when I'm sending something across the water, how you know how is your product still if, uh, moving quickly? Is the latency too bad that we can't? I can't I can't create a container over here because it takes too long. Um, so one example of, of looking at something fail as well as that is. We're talking with the Octavia folks to see if, if I spin up a lot of containers, am I going to therefore create a lot of load balancers? And if I create a lot, lot of load balancers, um, I'm creating a lot of VMs or am I creating a lot of containers? Are things breaking apart? So uh, we need to dig a little bit further to, to understand uh, what is and is not working with the integrations we're currently working on. And then again, we're exploring um, like GP, vGPUs just landed more or less, that was a part of the keynote as well, and so now we're talking about, well let's do some of that testing, the, the software, the code is there, but the, is it usable? 
Um, and so that's that's one area we want to start playing around with. Okay, uh, one of the other things in the, the keynote got mentioned was Zool, this is CI CD uh -huh. tool. Uh, how's that fitting into the Open Lab? Yeah, we use Zool as our uh, gating. So what's great about Zool is that you can interact with projects from different SCMs. So like we have some projects that live in GitHub, some that utilize Garrett, some that utilize GitLab, and Zool has a pluggability where it can talk to uh, different, it can talk across these different SEMs. And if you have a patch that depends on a patch in another uh, another project, so a patch in one project can de in one SEM can depend on a patch in another project in a different SEM. And so what's great about Zool is that you can say, hey, I'm depending on that, so before this patch lands, check to make sure this stuff works over there. So if it, if it succeeds there and it's a dependency, then and, uh, you, you basically confirm that it, it succeeds there and then now I can run the test here and it passes here as well, so you know that you can use both of those projects together again as in an integration. Does it right. make sense? I, I, I'm, Hopefully I'm making it very clear, uh, the, the, the power there with the cross SEM integration. Yeah, uh, Melvin, you, you've had a busy week here at the show. Yeah. What, 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 <laughs> any uh, you know, interesting things you learned this week or something that you heard from a customer that, oh boy, we got to you know, get this into our lab or roadmap yeah. or, uh, you know, what-, what, what the, the ARM story, the multi-architecture is, I, I feel like that's really um, taking off. Um, we've had discussions with quite a few folks around that. Um, so, yeah, that, that, for me, that's, that's the next thing that I think we're really going to concentrate a little bit harder on is, again, figuring out if there's some problems because mostly it's been just x86. Um, but we, so we need to start exploring what's, what's breaking as we add multi-architecture. All right. Well, yeah. Yeah. Melvin, no shortage of new things to test no, and play with, and every customer uh, always brings some some unique spins on, sure. on things. So uh, appreciate you giving us the update on Open Lab. Uh, thanks yeah. so much for joining You're welcome. us. Welcome. Thanks right. for having me. For John Troyer, I'm Stu Miniman. Thanks so much for watching the Cube.